the man, that groove has launched more dancing than any other groove out there. Today on the drum department, we have Jonathan Sugarfoot Moffat, and we're going to learn all about basically your career on stage. Join us on the drum department right now. <laughs> Yeah. All right, so first off, yeah. you look great. Thank you. It's getting a little bit hot in this thing, though. Uh, that's fair. <laughs> I was going to say, that might be a little warm. Jonathan, thank you so much for coming back to Drumeo. It's good to be here again. Yeah, it's been five years since we had you, hey? Around mm. that, five, six years, was it? Five years, and um, so much has happened, and um, we're all glad to be still here yeah. and be able to do this again. Well, one thing I love about uh, now when you're out, this is the new show, it's called The Drum Department, and we literally take the conversations that drummers have in their own drum department in their local music store, and we put them to the test. And when we knew we had Jonathan Moffat coming out, we're like, well, what kind of conversations do people have about that? And I know I've always asked, like, or often asked, like, what makes you so special that you get to play with the world's biggest pop stars and go on the biggest tours? You know, there's something special about that. So I think that's what we're going to dive into today, right? Yeah, and I know you're a very humble man, so I don't want to, you know, overshoot. But, I mean, come on. Michael Jackson, the Jackson 5, Janet Jackson. And that's just the Jackson family, yeah. right? <laughs> then we got Elton John, who I don't think is in the Jackson family. Madonna. <laughs> um... You, now, uh, you did work with Cameo, or you have yes. worked with Cameo? Yes, 38 years off and on. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, um, you've worked with, like, oh, uh, George Michael, of course. Two years of George Michael. Um, and I did some research. You have played with many of the top-selling pop artists of all time. Wow. Okay. And that's amazing. Now, take that for what it's worth, but at the same time, there's got to be a reason that what you do on this instrument, they trust you, yeah. and, and they, they want you. You know, you could take that off if it's yeah. too warm. Yeah, I think it's time. I'm starting That's to a quick reveal. A I haven't played much, and I'm sweating <laughs> quick already. <laughs> Wait a minute, I want to use up all my juice all up. <laughs> well, it, took, it only took five minutes, and we got Moffat to start. There taking we off. go. You got the good look already. That's so. right. Look, yeah. We'll see how we do here. <laughs> we'll see if we get there. So, b before we get into these, because we got some questions to ask you, we've got some clips we want to share. Um, I just want you to play on that snare a little bit. This is the snare. <laughs> it's funny because like three drum uh, drum departments ago, we talked oh, about yeah. the most recorded drum uh, snare drums at Drumio, yeah. and the honorable mention went to your. Uh, little piccolo there because it sounded so incredible and we have it back in in the studio so can you play us like the Billie Jean groove or something just let's hear this snare okay I'll do that I'll get this out Here. There is something oh. about the impact, that power you have. <laughs> it's like a freaking shot. And we got a nice tour of the three bass drums. I don't know if you guys, do we have a wide enough shot? I don't even know if <laughs> we can fit this all in. That's <laughs> most of the drum sets. Hmm. There's actually three bass drums on the ground, and you are definitely switching back and forth between the three different sounds. Um, but And we're going to talk about your drums, too, because mm -hmm. I think a big part of your career, you've made sure you've had... Specific kits for the for the tours mm -hmm, yes. and a different look and feel to each one. Yeah. Uh, so let's get into this. Let's I want to get right in. So, yeah. 19, <clears throat> 1984, 
Mm -hmm. You're doing the Jackson's Victory Tour. Yes. Okay. And now you've toured with them before that as well. And there's some really cool footage of that, like before days. Um, and those are pretty cool kits. I would say still pretty big drum sets. Yeah. But I think when we hit 1984 is when we really get to like the beginning of that whole Moffat look. Yeah. yeah. So I want to show a clip. This is just a quick clip of you on that tour. Check this out, everybody. Jackson 5 Victory Tour. Man, that kit, the thing about that drum set, I remember seeing that in, in ads back in the day. There's that, that extra rack tom yeah. that you kind of had. They're, like, they're kind of going into... Now, correct me if I'm wrong, I want to I want to say those toms look like they're in the victory formation. That's right. V, oh! v, v, make a V. I love like it. Design, purpose so hold design. on, explain that. You, you decided specifically for the tour to match with... The, the V for the signification v for is the V for victory. Uh, I designed the kit around that. I found out what kind of colors the stage was, the uh, theme was going to be. So I asked them the color schemes, and I designed a kit that was more neutrals to grays. The, the drums and the paint this design was from white to the faded down to the gray stages and all the way to the black at the bottom. No and kidding. Then, then I, underneath that, before we did the, those fades down and, and the white to black views, we did candy color car paint. Geometric stripes we taped off figures, geometric figures. What I drew the whole thing. Oh, you're kidding. I had the original drawings of that whole kit. Unreal. I drew them off the high one at the middle time. If you notice, they had the this side was coming from this way, yep, that yep. side was coming from that way, and in the middle it had the middle stripe, that division stripe, and it made configured convergence on the V. Oh my god. So goodness. the rack times kind of signified the V for victory. You had the the flown symbols. Probably one of the first times we see symbols mounted upside down. Yeah. Um and so that tour, I mean, that was, of course, the biggest tour of 84. Michael had already put out uh, Thriller the year before. Yes. So, uh, I mean, like, that's like right in the middle of it all. I had to show the clip of Jermaine because I just love Let's Get Serious. I think it's a great song. Yeah. But, uh, but can I say something? Please. something? Many people don't know, our musical director didn't play drums for Jermaine on his 86 um, Precious Moment tour. Oh my gosh. And, and Michael saw that tour. And came out three times. Once dressed as an old man, you didn't even recognize him. <laughs> Another time dressed as an old lady. Then he came out the third time and bite like himself. But um, he saw that tour and didn't know I had put the band together. But mother told him, you know, you already has you this band that's foot put together for Jermaine. Yeah. And he came to see it and he came three times. And that's when I didn't know it, but he, he said, you put the band together? And I said, yeah, that was me put the band together. Me, no but, kidding. Yeah, Denzel Miller, uh, assistant uh, music director. He said, you put the band together. I said, yes, I did. He asked me so several times. Okay, that's, all right, all right. And you did it. <laughs> <laughs> I said, yes, I did. I put the band together, rehearsed them, and put that show together. And he said, oh, my God, that sounds amazing. That's a great, great band, best band I've heard of all the Jackson brothers. They call it the Brothers Tours, of all the Brothers uh. Tours. Little did I know he'd call me a year later to musical direct for him for Bad Tour. Wow. I'll, I have the contract for me to be a musical director for the Bad Tour. Yeah, you want to keep that. Yes, I have the contract. Wow. I was just going to ask, you're talking about the kit, like how much how much yeah. creative input do they give you for I mean, for that tour, obviously the kit? Is that something that you get to help kind of work on, work on and create every tour? Well, Michael is a very uh, incredible artist himself. He respects art and graphic arts and stuff like that. Amazing, phenomenal artist. But he he knew that I'd draw, because when I first joined him in 79, the music director told him he's from my hometown. He said, Sugarfoot draws too. And so um, I ain't gonna get into the drawing contest. I'll save that for the book. Sure, sure. He and I, he challenged me. He challenged me to a drawing contest. Of course he won. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I hadn't drawn in years. So anyway, um, so um, did, did we put it together and, um, and uh, he said, um, I want you, when I finally got the, got the call for the, the music director, I was also called for Madonna and it conflicted. And so 
he, on the tours, he would allow me because he trusted that I knew art. And he just said, let me just give us an idea what you want to do with colors. I asked him what the color theme scheme for the stage is going to be. Mm -hmm. And then with that in mind, I started designing something for the graphics on the kids oh, and stuff like that. The drum configuration, I've already thought through. I'm going to do something different big because I heard the stage is going to be humongous, which the, the Victory Tour, no, that was History Tour. History Tour, I think, the stage was 210 feet across by 90 feet deep. Oh, it's crazy. And the Victory Tour is much the same, a little bit smaller. But huge, and so I knew I had to get something because I can't go over there with a um, Reggie Broadcaster kid. <laughs> <laughs> no, I it's would imagine bad. Charlie not. Watts could get away with it, but <laughs> yeah. not no, 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 it'd be disappearing in the back. So and what kind of nothing against Brett Gretzky, I love the drums. Well, yeah, what kind of what kind of things do they tell you? Like, okay, here's the, here's your footprint. Fill that up. Here's a couple colors in mm, mind. Like they don't, what? they don't. They just say, well, let's keep, let's see what you can do when you came up. Come up with something. Right. All right. But that, that, of, I had to consult with them because. That rack system, nobody had done nothing like that. It was one inch tube to, tubing, yeah. and I did I drew everything out because I majored in art in school, and uh, my, my master major was in art, so I could draw everything from the front, from the back, from this side, mm -hmm. that side, overhead. So I knew the rack is what it's supposed to look like when you finish it. The sculpture, it's functional right. art. So um, I did that, but nobody could had built that before with that size tubing and stuff. So they had to found this this uh, metal uh, guy that used to work for Disney. And they hired him. We had like a week or two to build it, and it cost them ten grand because the last minute. And uh, they, they, they're doing something experimental. Sure, and, sure. Uh, and so anyway, we just, they built a rack for it and sized me in it, and then got it right right at in the production rehearsals and stuff. But so they saw the drawings what I was trying to do, and they, they said that's gonna be great. Let's go with it. So they give me some leeway. They don't like you know restrict me too much. You know sometimes when they try, when I was trying to use the five bass drums, they say no, that's too much. <laughs> <laughs> and then I went up to three. They said no, you can't. But you know I had to get a little clever, and I kind of, I kind of, I said I'm gonna do it anyway, and then put it up there and see what happens. And then they say, well, I told you, told you you can't have three bass drums. And then Michael saw it. Oh, foot, that is great. I love it. I love it. I, I love it. And then they didn't mess with me no more. <laughs> two tours that happened. Two tours. Michael likes it. Oh, really. Okay yeah, with it. Yeah, yeah. Happened on another tour as well. So. This, this is it tour, you know, and the, the engineers say, we want to have those channels, extra channels you take. I said, we need those channels. And Michael said, no, no, I love it. Leave it like that. And then uh, the Immortal Tour, the same thing. Sound guy was trying to cut me back to two. And I put two up there. Then I, the one night I snuck the other one in there. <laughs> and, and then the, the state found out, you know, states like, you know, I'm with the state and still in the family and stuff. And they gave me good high regard because of my relationship with Michael. Oh, yeah. And they said, no, let him have it. <laughs> Let him have yeah, whatever it. Whatever he wants, right. whatever he wants. Yeah, brilliant. And, uh, you know, I felt good, you know. It pays off to be a little bit sneaky sometimes, though, right? Yeah, Just you a have little to be. bit. You have to be cunning, <laughs> cunning sometimes. No yeah. kidding. So, I mean, that I want, so the two tours, I had the three bass drums and stuff, you know. It's amazing. Yeah. All right, talking about huge stages, this clip blows my mind because you're the only person I've ever met that's actually played Live Aid. So oh, wow. I want to show a quick clip. This oh, yeah. is you playing with Madonna yeah. in 1985 at Live Aid. Check <laughs> yeah. this out, everybody. Okay. <laughs> that's got to be one you've, of the coolest feelings to play on a stage. You've, like you've played on big stages. That's got to be <laughs> one of the biggest stages you've ever played on. That was very special because the entourage of artists that was on that concert for a good cause, both in London and in Philadelphia. We were in Philadelphia. We had finished the Virgin Tour. Excuse my voice, I'm a little bit. Uh, we finished the Virgin Tour. Then they got called, she got called to do this. Mm -hmm. So we had to put everybody back together and do this for the good cause, you know, like right. to help people. And uh, we're more than happy to do it. And I got to see some of my other great artists. I was just going to ask. There may be no better time to see so many people at one time. Did who did you check out that day? I, I checked out Zeppelin. Oh and, my god! Uh, and it was Zeppelin. Zeppelin. Uh, no, no. Uh, what's uh, Zeppelin? I think was who was that then? Tony Thompson. Tony Stein, Thompson and Stein. Phil Collins played Phil together. Phil Collins, they on that. Yes, right. Famous That's performance. That's correct. Yes, but they was talking about getting me do it. Of course. And then they got they got to do it instead. You know? oh, you're so, kidding. Yes, I was buzzing on the stage. What were we going to do? They found, then they talked. They, they got Tony Thompson and, and Phil Collins. And, wow. and they did one or two. I said, what an opportunity. One of my favorite bands. Right. Yes. Uh, so ever. So, so, so um, what, what's the difference in, in like a show like that compared to um, the Victory Tour or Michael Jackson <clears throat> Tour? Obviously, a completely different stage, different artist. Uh, anything that stood out? Anything that's a little bit different that, that you liked, didn't like? But the aspect that it was a, a multitude of artists for the right cause, and it wasn't like a Richard Michael show. It's a Michael 
mainly Michael. He had a magician or something like that. Then it was just Michael with the spectacle. Mm-hmm. Madonna was the sad for opening it. Well, you very seldom, some, very seldom a band to be some kind of act, theatrical act or something like that. Occasionally with Madonna, it was Foxy or, or some other artist, you know. With Michael in the, in the Jackson days when I first joined him, they had the LTD, you know, current, uh, the other bands, you know, top R&B bands, Midnight Star and yeah. stuff like that, Mark Hayes. But uh, when he got to be Michael, Mm-hmm. You know, he, it was just him. It was about him, a magician, or something like that, quieter. Yeah. And then he'd have that massive impact when he come on stage. All, all your show, all you yeah, guys. You know you were there for him. So a difference was that on those, on that show, Live Aid, it was such <laughs> grand magnitude and multitudes of fantastic top of the tier artists, artists yeah. as well. Yeah. Madonna at the time was just coming out. That yeah. was the first tour of the Virgin. I did with the first tour ever. And so she was just breaking the glass to, to get to the top level. Um, but these other artists were icons already. Right. And that was a, a real big difference. I had done the things with the Jackson and everything, but these were the icons of the 60s and 70s mm-hmm. and 80s, stuff like that. So in that respect, I was amongst them and I felt the difference and wow, I'm with them. Mm. But I felt green and kind of new still. Oh, Were young, you nervous? Young. Um, no, no. No. <laughs> not at all. It's not no. at all, eh? <laughs> so mm-hmm. how did you, um, uh, talk us how you got to play with Madonna in the first place? Because you said you did the tour with her before the Live Aid show. Yeah. Um, how did that all, How did that come to fruition? That was her first tour ever. Um, I, I told about a manager, Freddie DeMann, who handled, used to, when I joined the Jacksons, manage the Jacksons in 79. Well, um, I got a call from him one day. I just finished the Victory Tour, and uh, and he said, uh, say, Foot, um, Madonna, you ever heard of her? And I said, he said, yes, she's getting ready to go on tour, first tour ever. And um, she saw you and uh, on the Victory Tour, you and the brothers and stuff, and, uh, and that's a brother, and you, you and the other band members. And she saw you there, and she said, that's my drummer. That's what she said. He said she said it. No way. She pointed at me. Nice. That's my drummer. That's my drummer. And so he said, well, that's good because I already got his number. Uh, I was managing the brothers and, and I got his number in the contacts. He said, that's my drummer. And then she picked out David Williams. She picked out Pat Leonard from the Victory Tour band. But um, uh, uh, so anyway, she, she, she said, I want him. So he said, I'm calling and asking you if you want to be a drummer for Madonna and stuff. And I, I didn't know much about her and stuff like that. And I said, okay, uh, that sounds cool. You yeah. know, um, what kind of music again? I remember a couple of songs. I said, okay. Freddie said, look, just do this for me. You'll see. She's going to be the next Michael, female Michael. <laughs> yep, he said, do it. this for me. I said, okay, I'll do it, Freddie. So it's almost like a favor. You, yeah, yeah. In, in a way, but at the same time, I knew Freddie did only did handle top tier people. Yeah. And, and I knew it wasn't going to be no flake stuff. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I, so I said, okay, I'll do, I'll do that. So I wound up uh, being in there with her and, and the audition the band. Brought in, we auditioned percussions and it was Luis Conte, Terry Santil, and some, a couple of other ones. I think, um, I forgot who else it was. Timbali, I believe it was. But anyway, I wanted, she found a want to pick up uh, Luis. That's how we got together. Brilliant. But, uh, that's how I got that gig because she saw me on the Jacksons, with the Jacksons. Amazing. At Dodger Stadium. Uh, wow. um, and she said, that's my drummer. Oh, man. That's your guy. So, so um, is there like a favorite um, groove or favorite Madonna song when you're on tour? Like, is there one song that stands out to you when you were on that, on that tour? Um, I have a lot of great, great music. Um, I would say um, I like that song. Uh, Get into the groove, celebrate. They're simple beats, very simple beats. But you asked me before, prior, why do people hire me? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, it's not about the chops and stuff. That I, I'm a more so- song oriented drummer. Although I used to do all the chop stuff, but I haven't done that in so long. So I ain't gonna mess with that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about the pocket and the groove. Show us, uh, uh, play, play one of the Madonna. Uh, uh, tunes here, just the groove, lay it, yeah. lay it down. Now, one of the things I must mention now, I've been, I was having trouble with just not to broadcast it, but the bass drum has come off of the pedal. That's why I couldn't do my. Oh no! Thing. Yes, I'm oh, yeah. so it's, it's, Which it's, one? You have three bass drums. <laughs> That's true. Maybe, maybe you could use one of the other bass drums. <laughs> yeah, but I have to do that. That was good. That was good. There you go. And the simple beat, you know, uh, um, getting the groove.
something simple but effective. so like bouncing about your playing is so dancing. <laughs> just there's something that's just always moving forward a little bit. Maybe. It's that snare, man. <laughs> it's a snare. It's a snare. <laughs> that's right in the middle. Everything else around is <laughs> just kind of dancing around. It's <laughs> so good. Um, okay, let's go a little farther forward. Um, I was going to talk a little bit about Blonde Ambition. We're not going to worry about that one right now. We're going to talk about Elton John. Um, you did Red Stripes Back to her. I think you did one, uh, maybe Sleeping in the, with the Past as well. I did that. Played all, all the songs on Sleeping with say, the Past. And you played album. on the record too, right? All, all the, the album too. The whole um, album. The whole album. I, I, will, I will confess, it was actually hard to find footage of mm. this tour, but I did yeah. find some. Uh, I want to show a quick clip. Um, pay attention to where Sugarfoot's kit is in this video because it Ooh. is I don't think something. I've seen this. Check mm -hmm. it out. Yeah. It's it's like you know I, I love that you're like literally on top of Elton John. Yes. You know, like like he set up right in front of you and yeah. like the, where that kid is positioned, like and it's big. Yeah. Like like I mean Elton John's playing a friggin' piano and your kid's <laughs> still just this thing. But what what blows me away about about uh having you play with Elton, because Elton had such a long history with Nigel Olsen, of course, yeah. plays very sort of singer-songwriter, maybe a little bit more, um, you know, time is a little bit more fluid, mm -hmm. and with you, such a different approach. And I want to know, when you got that gig, did you consciously think about, like, what Nigel had done, or did you just go in, I'm going to do what I do, and we're going we're gonna to do it our way, and we're going to make this magic? What well, was your take? I, actually, when I got the gig, I couldn't believe it. Elton John wants me to play with him. Right. And, and then that's when his assistant said, no, he's been following your career for years now. And that's why he told me to have to call you. He had Don, David Johnstone find the information and call because Davey is the music director. So I was really shocked and ha happily so surprised. And I said, okay, I'd love to play with Elton. Yeah. The Elton, you know. So, you know, um, I, of course, when I work with an artist like that, like all artists, you know the artist most of the time wanted like the record. Yeah, yeah. So, I've, and I, but this is the other thing to go back. Since I've been a fan of Elton for all those decades, and I love, love, love Nigel Olsen's playing mm. and his touch and his magic, and he plays the right appropriate thing for Elton's music. He's perfect to me. He meant to be with Elton. Yes. Mm -hmm. And right, he co-wrote those songs on the drums with Elton because mm -hmm. his his fills are signature to a lot of those great songs. It's an songs. extension of the vocal halftime. Yeah. Exactly. So I thought I knew it was important to keep those fills original and try to be as true to them as possible because those those are. are Signposts in the songs, mm. as well as signatures of of, of Nigel's style, right. and he had an incredible way of, of musically phrasing his Tom feels, which I always loved and gravitated towards. So I wanted to be that. I wanted to be Elton, I'd be Nigel on that on their songs. But when I got to the, it was like an audition rehearsal, and um, for uh, age benefit, the first thing I did with him, and I bought in the bass player. They said, pick a bass player and bring him in. You know, at the audition, I bought in Romeo Williams, and and um, so we, we got in there. We started playing, and of course, I knew Elton's music because we just played in clubs, and I loved it. And of course, I practiced it before we, we got to the first day of, of rehearsals and stuff. So I tried to be true to the record and stuff like that, and we got in the rehearsals and playing and stuff, and, and then and Elton stopped him and said, no, 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 wait. He turned around to me. He said, Sugarfoot. He said, um, no, no, you, you can play. You can play more. Because I'm very disciplined, playing with Michael Madonna. Yeah, yeah. Very disciplined, okay, right? right? Yeah. And discipline is power. Remember what I said? Mm -hmm. it's that. So um, and that's the chop. That's right. <laughs> discipline is that's a chop. Right. Might be a pork chop, but no, I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> I love that. It's a, it's a steak. It's a <laughs> it's a steak. <laughs> okay, it's a steak. But anyway, <laughs> so I always worked on and honed my discipline to reserve not to do something when you have the urge to do a lot or do something is a sense of power and something very important, not only in self-personality as well. Mm. So I always worked on that in my life. And so when not to play, 
So, but I was saying, no, no, you, you can play more. You can play more. I said, I said oh, okay. All right. So, I said, so I, think, so I start playing a little bit more. Just very touches here and there. And he was playing again. We were playing. And then he stopped again. He said, hold on. No, you can open up just, just you can play some more. <laughs> You're yeah, kidding. I, I, said, I said, oh, I did. I put in some pills and some others. No, no, no. Just, just play, play, play. And uh, I said, you're getting a little nervous with me. I said, oh, man. So I, I started playing more and I started playing, I, I started playing even some extra stuff. But he, he wanted, he could tell my, my spirit and creativity was restricted mm. by what I had learned. Yes. So he, he stopped again. And I said, oh, Lord. He turned around. He said, he said no, Sugar, but you don't understand. I got you here because I want you. I mm. like you. We're playing. Challenging you. He said, if I, want, if I wanted Nigel, I have him here. You know? And he said, I have you because I want you. Mm. Play, play, play. Really? He said, like, play, play, play. I said, okay, all right. Then I started jamming like I used to do at the club. Yeah. And he was playing and turned around. Yeah, yeah, that's what I want. That's what oh, I want. Oh, my goodness. How cool is that? What, oh, man. But the thing is, the key is you let them tell you when to yeah. open up. Yeah. I don't take it on myself to do that. I, I, you know, and I kind of knew after the second time, but I said, no, I don't want still don't want to pay too much. And he said, oh, no, no, pay, I'm blessed. So um, I just said, I'll let him direct it. And when he said, open up, don't just play, open up, be yourself, play, you're here because of you. And then I got the signal. I said, that's the sign. I got the green light. And I, I started playing a lot more expressive, more symbols, and he started and more power. He said, yes, yes, that's what I mean. That's it, that's it, that's it, play. That's so cool. And then it was on. <laughs> do, you, do you remember like um, some of the things you did? What song it was in particular that he was turning around for that you just needed to open up more in? Mm, I don't remember exactly. It was a couple of songs, actually, a couple of songs. Yeah. But I was always... Uh, I was always fearful of overplaying. It's worse when the artists tell you you're playing too much. Mm. Are you overplaying? You're trying to steal my show. <laughs> yeah, it's not about you. It's the he's a really rhythmic piano player too. Right? Oh, he's very much very busy. And yeah. you look at the video though, and you have stealing the show, but you you're on the freaking front center, <laughs> yeah. and raised yeah. above. Yeah. You know? yeah, but that's what he wanted me to to believe how I interpret his music. You know, there was no clicks. You know, except for one song, it was a click on. Uh, I forgot which song that was, um, and it was a drum machine on another one. But the lives we did, the first two we did was four hours long. Whoa. No intermission. Oh. Whoa. Forty something songs. It's like got 40, a lot of 41, hits. 42 so. songs, yeah. That's crazy. And then and people start complaining, was, they love the show, but it's too long. So he cut it back, okay, cut it back. Three and a half hours. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh my it thought it'd be a three and a half hour show. That's amazing. And I guess there's no openers for that that show. You mm -mm. go, you go no, for no. the album. No magician, show. no nothing. Yeah. yeah. So is there any... Yeah, memorable or funny mo story from one of the shows that you did with Elton that you want to share? Uh, let's see. I mean, if, uh, you know, um, oh yeah, one time was we were doing a show and I forgot where it was. I don't think it was Texas, whatever. And um, of course, the, the attendees, uh, the, the, the ushers and stuff at the arena try to keep people in control and stuff. And they put, you know, the bodyguards on the stage and the, body, the ushers are trying to say, sit down, sit down. Just. Boy, did he get mad one time. He got so mad, he stopped in the middle of a song and, and kicked his bench over. He said, and he took the microphone, he walked over to the side stage and do it. <laughs> no, <laughs> and he was like, whoa, what's going on? He said, he said leave my effing people alone. These are my uh... people. Let them dance, let them do it. He went off. We were like looking at each other, whoa. Oh, <laughs> he went off. He stormed guy. back to his chair. <laughs> let them dance. Let them stand up. <laughs> let them be can speed himself. And the ushers got nervous and stuff. <laughs> but they instructed to keep people in control. No standing up and no mm. dancing in the whole hours. But he said, "No, I'm gonna stop this show." And no going, they, were, they were going crazy. So oh. that was one time I remember. You know, it was very special that uh, he wanted. He loved his fans. His audience. He wanted them to have a good he time. To have a great time and open up and be and celebrate with him. Yep. Be yeah. part of it. You know. So respect that. That was one time I remember. All right, we're gonna Love jump that. ahead, Chris. Uh, I know I have a, a, a clip queued up for uh, the Blonde Ambition tour. Let's skip that. We're gonna do the next <laughs> one. Uh, so let's get onto the history tour because mm -hmm. uh, there's some really cool stuff. You were saying earlier that you have some really unique footage from that. You're like, we're debating. You you may have invented the drum cam because <laughs> really? that footage from that tour <laughs> is your footage of yes. you playing. Yeah. Um, now the clip I pulled is I think from I think it's black or white, uh, the song, and I want you all to pay close attention to what's happening in front of you mm. because I want you to explain because I don't know what's going on there, yeah. uh, and then I want to talk a little bit about the evolution of this drum kit because there's some cool stuff happening. Yeah, uh, let's check this out. This is uh, Michael Jackson's history tour out uh, Sugarfoot.
Okay, so who puts a wall in front of Sugarfoot? <laughs> what, what is going, going on? Yeah, what was going on there? That? <laughs> Explain yourself. <laughs> yeah. Did you did you cross the line with your drum kit? They're like, nope, too much. <laughs> yeah, too, they said too much sweat is flying out here. Oh. Getting all on the dances and everything. <laughs> They got to block They're slipping all over the stage. Yeah, oh, we crazy. can't even dance anymore. But <laughs> <laughs> that's on that song when they, they the, the way the stage for that setting for that song was a wall of uh, who used to do the who mm. amp a wall of amps mm -hmm. and they this to do was building the wall of amplifier fake speakers foam. Made so we're seeing like, behind the scenes there. They're not real. <laughs> yes, not real. No, they got to be able to push them over at the yeah. end. You know, and they da da, and they push them all over, uh, and then they fall everywhere. And then afterwards, the stage hands, just in costume, would have come push them off the stage for the next song. Uh, yeah, uh, but that's what that's about. No, not so much the sweat. But. All right, <laughs> uh, my question on this one is so. Uh, that's 97, 90, I think. 97, 97, 97, 96, 97. 96, 97. Um, that whole show is probably to click? Yes. The whole, sh everything Michael does, click. Uh, doesn't look like you're wearing in-ears though. Is it all through monitor? Uh, you know, I had monitors, huge speakers. So I said, I and would this. you, would you play to like an actual click track or would you just have like a drum machine part? Click here. Oh. And everything, but it's halfway pushed in, so I, I had need to feel ambience. Yeah, you know, mm. um, the, the ambience of the people. I can even now I got these pushed in, I feel cut off. Right, you know, usually, but I usually have them halfway in. I can hear the drum kit from the ambience of sitting over it. You know, but I had most yeah. all the sound coming out. The only click were coming to the ear monitor, mm. and all my music to play too was coming out of my my uh, big giant cabinets at the back. Right. Yeah. So those camera, you're talking about the drum cam. Yeah. But that wasn't a thing before. I don't think this? so. I can't think of an example like it. Can you? What? No. I mean, you're right. I didn't even. I'm trying to think when did that start, but that that could be it. Like, did you just have the idea to plant a video camera on like one of your racks or something? How, how did that come to be? I just decided. You know, I, of all the tours I've done, I have no footage of just me. It's always from the distance, and I'm like this small, mm -hmm. you know, and um, or you know, from an angle where you don't see me. I say, and then I have no no um, history of my performance with certain artists, so adore, especially with Michael. I said, I'd love to have, because I'm doing all my stick twirl, I'm doing all my playing, my visuals and stuff. I said, nobody gets to see that because I'm in the dark. Right. So um, mm. anyway, so I decided, you know what, I just film it, I'd like to have some footage of myself, what I'm doing for when I get older, like now. <laughs> and I can look, go back and look at that and reference it and then enjoy those years of my life, you know, and see what I was, how I was doing back no then. Kidding. So it was just a personal reference. You know, I, I had that footage since 97, 96, 97. Never, uh, 97, that was from Cape Town, was in the last of the shows of the tour, mm. 97. Okay. The last few shows. And, um, I just, you know, I sat on it all in years. Nobody's seen it. In fact, I didn't even watch it. Either. Do you still, do you have like just a, like a box of all these, like what would they be, like 8 mil tapes, I guess, or DV um, tapes or VHS mm -hmm. tapes? Like what, do you have a, all of them just sitting there somewhere? All of it, always derived from uh, 8 millimeter tapes mm -hmm. and different type of cameras, you know, JVC, Sony mostly. But, um, you know, I have them just sitting in place and some of them are transferred to VHS, you know, so I got yeah. copies on VHS. But I have, yeah, several boxes of that stuff. And I got several boxes of uh, audio from the rehearsals oh. of Michael, oh, the Jacksons, man. Jermaine, Janet. How cool yeah, would that Madonna, be? Every tour of Madonna, uh, Elton John. Oh, uh, man. Uh, I felt all this reference and stuff, like the cameo rehearsals and shows, and which, you know, I'm going to do some stuff with cameo, Madonna, concerts on tape, audio. Yep. I'm going to take all that stuff, process it, and make, you know, I'm starting, my, I'm starting my channel. Um, it's going to be Mafia TV. Oh, brilliant! Cool. Yeah, I'm going dude. To be I would watch. Footage. I would sit down on a Sunday afternoon and watch all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's just great. Yeah, so you guys pay attention. It's coming to my channel, Mafia TV, and watch some of these rare footage, concert footage that I have, and I'm going to make it like a record and like a video, and I'm going to process it. In other words, it's on cassette, so the quality is not. Hard. But with, with the stuff like you guys have here, you can make it sound like a real record, live recorded. Yeah, album. no yeah. kidding. And, yeah. and so I have audio tapes of the rehearsals. I'm going to do the same thing, and that's what I have also besides. Moffat TV. I'm gonna have Moffat Radio. There you oh, go. Moffat Radio. Oh, there you I'm go. Down. All these concerts and rehearsals and there'll be <sighs> random footage here and they'll be releasing, putting up and, and, and uh, displaying my, my life's history. Amazing. These yeah. are my time capsules of my life. When really? you watch something like this, like we just went through what four clips. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, how, how does it make you feel? Is it like does it remind you of it was like yesterday, or does it bring back like a slew of emotions, or is it just like yeah, you know, I moved on? Like how does it make you feel when you're watching these old clips? It feels great. It feels accomplished. You know, it feels uh, um, and I enjoy watching it. You know, uh, stuff. Uh, um, I say, wow, I had a, I had a wonderful life, and everything the little boy hoped and dreamed he could do. Look at it. 
I, I, I did it. Yeah. And if I never do it again, I've done it. I got a record of it, history yeah. of it. So, I mean, that's the importance of it to archive your, I, I tell everybody out there, all the, the drummers out there, young and old, archive your life. Not yeah. only for just music, but archive as much of your life as you have mm. you can capture for your children's sake. My, my children can see what their father was doing. Some, Sometimes, most time, before they were born, mm -hmm. this is my life. You know, I'm leaving this all this record for them as well as yourselves. You know, like now I sit back and watch some things I've never watched. I was so busy working, 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 I never took time to watch it, mm. and I forgot what I had. I opened these boxes up and said, "Well, I got the, I forgot about this. Oh man, this is great. I'm so glad I captured this." You know, I recorded yeah. everything, even like a personal. Uh, I was saying earlier, personal stuff with me and my mother. You know, um, I used to go home to visit and I sneak the micro up there and I hide it on the pillow or somewhere and had to, Mommy, what, what did you say I did when I was like six years old? And have them and, and entice her to say something and tell a story. Say, oh, yeah. You know, oh, mothers, girl. they love That's to talk. Amazing. So I captured years and years of that. I have that. But I'm not me saying, like on the show, yo, know, my mother said, when I talked to my mom, she said this and she said that, that way. No, you hear her voice. You actually have it. Speaking about me, you know, laughing, enjoying the times and reminiscing. Uh, of so she, in other words, I lost her in 2017 at 101, but she's still living on yep. those tapes. She's still alive. Every time you hear her voice, mm -hmm. she's living. When you capture the living, you've got the living. So I uh, carry a force into this generation in these years. I love that. Yeah. And it's a lot easier to do now with phones. Yeah. You know, you can record video, and, but back then it was not easy to do. You had to have pe like an right. actual physical piece of gear. Yeah. Um, before I move on to another clip, if there is another one, I just want to hear, like, because the history tour was a massive tour. Mm -hmm. I want to hear, like, one funny moment or funny memory that you had from there, something that stands out from that tour. I'm sure you have a lot. <laughs> I got a few things. There's a few things. There's a few things. I don't know if you want, there's a couple of things, but maybe I'll save the other one for another talk segment or whatever. No, no, sure. make the special one now. Yeah, oh, make okay. the special okay. one now. Yeah, here we go. Okay. Tell the story okay. you wouldn't normally tell right now. <laughs> there's, there's one incident, incident in front of the entire audience. Michael is such a sens was such a sensitive and loving being and that he cared about everything in life. You know, he cared yeah. about the air even, the mm -hmm. air. We think he's taking for granted, we breathe it. He's worried about the pollution and the air and stuff. And that was gonna affect not only us, but the children and our future and his children and stuff. So and he cared about the water, he cared about the grass, the trees, the land, and everything about every every being in a sense of a being. And um, so we were doing this concert and it was the middle of the show and he's up in front, he's sweating up a storm, his stage stages all wet and everything. From sweating, he'd run up him and the dancers, running back and forth. So he's talking to the audience and he's looking on. He looked down. Wait a minute, wait a minute, there's a bug. There's a bug right here in the middle of the floor. And he made a big thing out of the bug. He said, Security, security, come, come. And people start laughing, but he said, No, you serious, serious, serious. And he started laughing and said, No, come get this bug. That's the big bodyguard's got to come out and pick up a little. You're kidding. So he said, Get this bug. I don't want nobody to step on. I don't want to step on. Oh, man. I don't want to step on. He stopped the whole show for like five, ten, about 10 minutes. Oh. Just to get rid of the bug. Yes, yes. And people laughing. That and bug he, had the best show of its life, though. <laughs> He oh made that, bug, that bug was a star. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he the security camera came out now tough like <laughs> Yeah, and he said, There he is, get it right there. Get it. And so the bug, the security guy looked around like, man, this is ridiculous. <laughs> he bent over, big old guy picked up the little bug and he still there. Everybody, everybody screamed in the whole stadium, laughing and screaming. <gasps> Like right Michael in the middle of the show, it just stops. Yes, it. Like yes. there's a bug. Wow. I didn't want nothing to happen to it. It would be terrible. <laughs> that, that bug gets back to his bug friends. He goes, You'll never believe what I did today. <laughs> now he waiting Jeez. for his royalties for that show. He gets his but my royalties. I was, oh on, my I was on that show. That's right. I was on that show. I was the center of attention for 10 minutes of <laughs> the Michael Jackson show. Yeah. You know what's funny is like the people, the only people that know about that story are probably the ones that were at that show. And that bug. And they're not gonna believe, they're, no one's gonna believe them. So yeah, you stop the show for a bug. <laughs> And the other ones on stage with me, the bandmates and dance mates, they know about it. We all cracked. We were laughing like, that's crazy. <laughs> but, but that was the power that Bug had. Stopped the show. My, Michael Jackson stopped him. And he cared about that Bug's I life. Love it. He said, that's a life too. That's right. That's crazy. I don't want him to die. I don't want to kill him. Really speaks to his uh, character. Okay. Yeah. 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 On that note, we're going to try something fun and different with you today. It's a new segment we have. It's called Blast Beats. 
Oh! Yes, and we're, we're going to do rapid-fire questions. So you got to answer with just the simplest, <laughs> quickest answer you got. Okay? okay. Is there like so, a time limit? Like Yes, there is. I'm, I'm glad you asked. Oh, all right. Let me, uh, Chris, if you can put the clock up on the screen, it's going to be 60 seconds. Yeah. We're going to try and get through 20 questions. Mm-hmm. If you do, we're going to give away a set of your sticks to someone out in the audience. Oh, cool. I like so that. I, like I don't want to put any pressure on you. Ooh. Yeah. Someone's going to win a prize if we get through this. Okay. Don't think about two, the answers too much. Like the first thing that comes to your mind is that the way we're doing there we it. Go. That's I right. Sweet, sweet bee sticks. Yeah. Yes, oh, exactly. Yeah. Which we're going to talk more about in a minute. Absolutely. But uh, so how this is going to work? So just answer with whichever choice comes to mind first. Yes. All right, Chris. Uh, when you're ready, I'm going to count you down. We're going to go and then uh, get that to go. We start the clock. Here we go. And three, two, one. Okay. Nylon or wood tip? Nylon for certain. Favorite place on the planet? Mm, difficult. There's several of them. Let's Pick one. one. I'd say Hawaii. Hawaii. Uh, heel up or heel down? Heel up. Who are you listening to right now? Me. <laughs> coded <laughs> or clear? Uh, uh, coded. Artist you want to work with? Be lost in Prince. Okay. Ah. Symbols, clean or dirty? Clean, crystal. Okay. Mm. Golf or tennis? Tennis. Okay. Ooh. Uh, pedals, chain, strap, or direct drive? Chain. Chain. TV or movies? Movies. Yeah, I knew that one. How many snare drums is too many? Mm. Four. <laughs> White wine or red wine? I don't drink. Okay. Oh. Single or double pedal? Mm. Oh, I gotta get. Oh. Single. Ah. Fly or drive? Oh! Fly or drive? Drive. Drive. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Fly if it's safe. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we're going to do the rest anyways. That was really good. We made it through that wasn't uh, bad. 15. Okay. And we're going to answer the rest, and we're going to give away a set of sticks anyways, because it's, right. it's for fun, right? All right, all right. All right. So the last five were, are concert toms still cool? I haven't played them in years. Okay. Mm-hmm. I like it's the unique I've heard of Dumbo here, Tom. Yep. Suit or t-shirt? I know the answer. Now. Suit. Yep. Yeah. Lacquer or wrapped drums? Lacquer for certain. Steak or seafood? Seafood. Okay. LP or streaming? So vinyl or streaming? Streaming. Mm. Jared or Dave? Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know the right answer here, Moffat. You know the right answer. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> ah. Since I'm kicking it with Dave Moore. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Jared's not here. It's his own fault. Jared's not here. Dave. <laughs> we buddies. We buddies. We <laughs> buddies. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to pick a winner anyways. Thank you for taking part of that. Oh, that okay. was beautiful. That was awesome. Uh, Thank you. Out there on YouTube, Chris Baines, you have won a set of Jonathan's Sweet Beat Drumsticks, which we're going to check out in a second. Congratulations to you. Email me at krad at drumio.com, and we'll get you a set of those sticks sent out. I might even get Jonathan to see if he'll sign them for you. I can't promise that, <laughs> but he is on camera right now. Maybe he will. We'll see. We'll see yeah, how it goes. Yeah, yeah. yeah we'll see what you do. <laughs> if not, I'll get Dave to sign them for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best. Does it make them worth less? It's I a don't close know. Second. Yeah, yeah. All yeah. right. Okay. Now, next segment we're going to do. It's called Groove of the Week. And so, normally we'll we'll teach a groove that we think is iconic mm-hmm. or uh, maybe one that inspires us. What I would love to hear from you today, something really simple, is when you sit down behind the drum kit. There's probably a go-to right now that's one of your favorites. What is that groove? Can you show it to us? Hmm. It would be um, my locomotive, of course. I like playing it, uh, but it's difficult. On this pedal, I'll try it out. And my main pedal is like, if hey, it's an issue, but here we go. Locomotive, you said, like a yes, train. Yes, like a train. I train. like how it's going, like from the bass drum to the snare drum, yeah, back yeah. and forth. So it's kind yeah. of a little low, a little high. Yeah. Super cool. And, and it sounded yeah. good on the twenty four too. <laughs> <And> almost, <laughs> yeah, the pedal was in. If you see the pedal is in a real awkward position. Mm. Yeah, so like you this, are a professional, uh, and you are. I had to tuck my leg under and curve it to make it to work, but it's not what's used to. 
It sounded but, great but though. It was, it was cool. I can do it in Moon Hoover. I take that. And um, can you get, is that a groove you would play? Like, have you, have you used that a lot in tunes over the years? Yeah. yeah. Was, not so much in commercial songs, yeah. but in concerts and in solos and things like that. One of those things you'd be like, I know what to work in this. My locomotive piece. Yeah, yeah. Make it's almost like an Indian tribal dance, too. I'm part yeah. of the American Indian, so. Oh, cool. But maybe that's where it comes from. I didn't know, but I, oh. maybe not. I think yeah, back. maybe, hey. Maybe that's where it comes because it's kind of like a tribal. That's super cool. Well, I mean, it, you got even dynamics within the bass drum that you're playing. Mm. Do, 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 yeah, yeah. Like you can feel the volume kind of yeah. push and pull and really it's, cool. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I like that. I like super that. cool. But, so we'll call groove that. Of the week. That, that'll be groove. Jonathan's go to groove right yeah. there. Sh- Sugarfoot's, we're, we're spitballing titles right now. <laughs> Sugarfoot's <laughs> Locomotive Groove. Look, I, yeah. I love it. I, I, I love it. Rolls sure. off the top. For the members, we'll put that, we're going to transcribe that and add this for sure for you guys. We'll add that to the video. Perfect. I yeah, love that. I'm going to yeah. do that. Yeah. Uh, okay. Speaking of Dromeo, and speaking of our members, uh, let's showcase our student of the week. Yeah, we're going to get a chance to see this. This is going to be great. Uh, we pick and highlight a new student every week. Um, someone who's shown uh, that they've been working on something, they've seen some uh, um, success in that, or they're just putting a lot of effort in. We like to highlight that. So who do we have this week, Kyle? This week, congratulations to Boo Kitty, who's student of the week and is watching right oh, now. Oh, Boo Kitty. Yes. Congratulations. Boo is a phenomenal drum student. She's been playing the drums for a few years now. Uh, studies with us a lot. She takes part in student focus. She does the collabs when she can. Uh, this video you're going to see is really special. Um, a bunch of our students got together and did a collab about uh, six months ago, maybe a little longer ago, um, for Dom Famulero uh, in respect to him. Now, Dom is a famous video with Drumio playing Eye of the Tiger. He made He's it. one of my heroes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and right. so all the students got together and they did their favorite versions of Eye of the Tiger. And Super so cool. Boo took part in that. And so to celebrate Boo being student of the week, Boo Kitty being student of the week is Boo being is tricky to say. Uh, let's show this awesome clip. Uh, I think Sugarfoot, you're going to really appreciate her take on this. Because okay. it's very, it's very Sugarfoot. Very oh, okay. uh, so this is Boo playing Eye of the Tiger. Congratulations, Boo, for being Student of the Week. Wonderful. It's in all the right. pocket, it's huh? In the pocket. Yeah. She's got the groove, the independence too. It's, right. It's the independence of any drummer learning, it's very difficult to come by. The chat to is going. Your brain and your arms and limbs. Yes. Chat's going crazy because <laughs> she's watching it and like, I gotta tell you, Boo, I can see Jonathan's foot from here. He's tapping his foot the entire time. <laughs> you were tapping. Yeah. <laughs> what awesome, an honor. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Wonderful, Boo. Wonderful. Awesome. I mean, what, what? that's super cool, right? And, you know, if you are watching on YouTube right now, uh, you know, these are the, some of the cool things that we do here in Drumeo. Yeah, so absolutely. if you get a chance, check us out. Seven-day free trial at Drumeo.com. That's, it's that simple. It really is that simple. Yeah, what are you guys waiting for? We're hanging out with Jonathan, and there's more. <laughs> We're just here filming oh, the drum goodness. department with him. You came in yesterday. You flew in yesterday. Yes. Mm-hmm. And we set up your kit. We haven't even, we actually didn't even do a sound check before this. The USS Moffat. <laughs> the USS Moffat has arrived. Well, you're here till what? Thursday? Yes. Thursday. So you're filming a ton of stuff. And I also want to plug one more thing. We recently did a podcast with Jonathan. Um, oh, right. It's on Beyond the Music. It's one of our podcasts that we partnered with Alan Cross. He's an amazing podcaster. And we featured you. Um, yes. So if you want to check that out, just Spotify or iTunes, Beyond the Music. Jonathan Moffat's episode's great. You can check. It's about a half hour interview, mm-hmm. I think. I enjoyed it very much. It was a great time, yeah. Good. I think they'll enjoy it as well. He's cool. a great interviewer too, Alan yeah, he's Cross. he's really nice, yeah. Yeah. I got one more plug. <laughs> he just reminded me of something. 
for the members. On Thursday, we're going to spend two hours with this man. Oh, that's right. Straight up Q and A. You got to be there. He's going to answer all your questions. Just Brandon for the and I are just going to hang out with with Sugarfoot just for the members. So uh, keep that in mind. It's at uh, two p.m. on Thursday. Cool. Yeah. I look forward to it. That's going to be fun. Let's talk about yellow sticks. Let's give some more of those sticks away. Yeah, here. let's talk about these drumsticks. So I want to know uh, why. What what brought you to literally making your own drumstick company? Well, I wasn't trying to make my own drumstick company, actually. I was trying to make, make sticks so I can have sticks. <laughs> <laughs> because I was with Promark for many, many years. Mm -hmm. yeah. Promark sold out to another company. Mm -hmm. And um, I was still on board during the uh, Circuit Mortal Tour. And um, when it sold out, changed hands, and then it just wasn't the same as my stick. Mm -hmm. So um, I had some issues and stuff, and it never got better. So I stopped, you know, mm -hmm. association. Um, no, no negativity intended. No. But I stopped the association. Sure. I had some in my storage in my warehouse, and, the stock, and I started running low. I said, what am I going to do? <laughs> I'm going to do that. I'm running out of sticks. There's, I did, in fact, when the new company took over, I said, we can't make your stick anymore. We, we, so what's unique about your stick? That's why they can't make it. It has two <laughs> tips on it. Uh, and uh, yeah. they have to, have to have a machine, like the old school machines of the 50s, 60s, that have a die. You can change the die mm -hmm. and change the size tip, you know, um, mm. and stuff. Promark made this for me. I designed this stick in the late 80s. Um, and then um, I presented my drawings to Promark at the, the, the Nashville NAM in 94. And they said, oh, yeah, we'll make this for you. So because they had that old machine. Mm -hmm. Right. So they made it for me, started producing my seller in 95. You know, um, but I have the two tips. I got a 2S tip on this end, the larger end, which I, when I play, I use the butt end of the, on the snare to get more power and authority and volume out of it. So, and I was a big round butt end, so mm -hmm. to speak, and I used the, this, the tip, natural tip for the ride. Real clean sound for that. So that was clean, but when I go to do some light stuff and I go to do it, it's a, it's a dull sound. And a bright sound, it didn't match mm. up. And a lot of times, I didn't like flipping my stick over a lot. I like to just keep my hands natural like that. So I say, what if I put a dip on the butt really? end? That's great. And yeah. then and have it like that. That way I can still play my volume in this volume of snare. And then when I just raise my arm naturally and play the cymbals. And do little colorful things on ballads right. and stuff. Instead of flipping this one over and doing all that stuff like that. So I make it convenient to keep the stick in the same position and make that. So it was just a novel idea. And they made it for me, and they've been selling it since 95. Then they sold the company, and then that, that company said, we can't make it no more. Mm -hmm. So I was like, what am I going to do for sticks? So my intention was to make sticks for me to use in the future to play. You know, So I decided to uh, look for companies that can make my stick. I went mm -hmm. to all the brands in, in the United States. Nobody can make it. They say, well, you can make it, we can make it. And they come back and say, we can't make it. Mm -hmm. So I was like, what am I going to do? I got I to gotta take the bull by the horns and make, try to make my own stick, find out manufacturers to do it so that's what I did and uh, for myself good for you my, I announced that I was making my stick for myself oh, but but all through those years the fans been asking we like your double in sticks where can we get them and you can't you, know, you just can't get promo them was selling them but they stopped selling them you know when they sold the company so uh, we were saying they're not available anywhere so it was my, my beautiful wife Myra who said we she says, oh, checks all my social media stuff, and she said, we get so many um, questions about where can they get your stick. You ought to make them to sell them. I said, no, I don't want to be a stick company. I don't want to be a stick company. Mm. Really. And she's convinced me and said, yes, so many fans are asking for your sticks. You should make, since you're making some, make some to sell to the fans. Mm. Then it becomes, uh, well, the... I use 2B nylons, and then it's got people use natural wood ones, and then they got 7As, 7Ps, 5, all these sizes. And she said, yeah, just make some sizes for them. So I just said, okay, I'll make a few, make some. But then people found out, and they started asking for different sizes mm -hmm. and different things. You know how it happens, so growing more more people requesting them. Yeah, yeah. So they, I thought at this size, at that size, and here I am, I guess, being a stick company, reluct <laughs> reluctantly. Yeah. Um, but people want them, and people, since we've been, we were selling them before we had them. There was like pre-sales, mm -hmm. you know, since early last summer. And it would, they, we wait for them, and it took months and months to develop. Can I see so, one of them? Yes, you can. I'll give you one that's not torn up yet. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Hickory? Uh, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. I love the paint job on these sticks. Yeah. They're beautiful. Yeah. And um, can you tell us, are they made in the U.S.? No, outside. Somewhere else. Okay, cool. So you sell them Very on your website? Cool. Sell them on my website, yes. Okay. They'll be trying to seek in the distribution now. 
in uh, talking to a few people, type of distribution. Hopefully, oh, we can yeah. we can narrow that down and get some something. So it's based on a two B. Two B in mind is a new two B size. Now every country has a different yes. diameter two B. That's the two. That's the two B. But I, what I did was there's actually their two B is not as thick as and heavy as mine. Yeah, this is pretty comfortable. Because I, I sent them my sticks to to match, ah. and so they got the weight and grams and stuff like that, and they made the, the thickness of the wood, and uh, have the balance. Make sure that they balanced, and uh, I had you know my specifics, I love that. and. Um, I wanted. I said, make this is going to be my stick because I designed it anyway. Yeah, so. yeah. And, and I, I got the patent on it. On oh, cool. The sticks and my keys. Yeah, and that's my, right. You got uh, drum keys now too. Style and drum yeah. keys. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. Could have zoom in on that bad boy. Mm -hmm. yep, so this all is you jewelry art key. All the stuff you can find on your website. Yes. Uh, let's give a couple of these sticks. Did you? Yeah. Are we allowed to? Did we? Did you bring some sticks? We're going to do it anyway. Yeah, we or, sticks okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, we'll figure it out. We'll figure Jonathan's going to come by tomorrow and there's not going to be any sticks left. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, he's going to have to make a second yeah, stick. I'll put it with my hands. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're going to give away a set of sticks uh, to someone on YouTube. Uh, uh, yeah, you know what? No, members. Sorry. Yeah, we'll give away <laughs> I distracted members. myself for a second there. We're going to give a set of sticks away to our members. And have gold as well. Oh, oh let me see the gold. Yeah, yeah. And these are also available. I just want to go through my notes here. Um, you can get them wood tip or nylon tip. Yes. They come in, I believe... Two different blues. This is the cobalt. There's a baby blue. The gold yeah. looks so uh, nice. Silver, which is a pretty rare one yeah. from what I could tell. Yeah, it is. There's gold, natural, and they'll have different tip types and stuff. Uh, and they're actually not that expensive. They're fifteen to nineteen dollars US a pair. Yeah. And you've got really cool stick packages. I saw. Yes, they it's have really like bundles. I call them bundles. Very cool. All very the stuff cool. I'm learning about bundles and all bundles. <laughs> Bundle it. <laughs> Things you thought you'd never have to learn. That's right. Yeah, I just want to play drums. Come we on, I want to play the drums. We do a lot of bundling around here. Yeah, we so. definitely yeah. do. All right, I'm going to give away a set to one of our members. Uh, let's see. I'm going to scroll through the old chatty chat. Let's do a gold, a gold, a gold pair. A gold pair. Okay, a gold sure. pair goes to. Let's do it. Oh, it's got to be Maria Two Sticks. Who else yeah, would get a pair? Maria of Two Sticks. Sticks. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations, Maria Two Sticks. Yeah. You just want a set of Jonathan's Sweet Beats drumsticks. Email me at krad at drumio.com and we'll get those sent out to you as soon as we can. Let's do one more for the members. Sure. Yeah. For the members, you got it. It's, yeah. For the members, we'll always do that. Of course. A blue pair this time. A blue pair. I'm gonna have to keep track of that, Dave. How am I gonna remember? that. Kyle. I'll, I'll watch the footage. You just watch it. <laughs> All right. Um, oh, great screen name. <clears throat> is this right? <laughs> Brilliant. But spelt right. So like like writing. So is this right? Congratulations. You've won. Apparently Dave says a gold pair. No, a blue. Blue pair. Sorry. Gold <laughs> gives the first one. <laughs> See? <laughs> You want a set of drumsticks? <laughs> Is this right? Email me at kradadrumyou.com at your earliest convenience. All right. Mm -hmm. Just before we go, we always like to give away a one-year membership to Drumio. For those of you out there watching on YouTube, just yes. to get a chance to get someone should get a chance to come yeah. and hang out with us, yeah. see all the cool stuff we're doing with Sugarfoot. You're going to see some of it on YouTube, sure. But there's going to be special stuff that we have inside. Yeah, and there's already special stuff from the last That's time. That's true. If you, ha if you haven't That's seen very, it. very, very true. We did the grooves of Michael Jackson. Remember that course? Yeah. That was fantastic. It's it was cool. one of my favorite courses. Well, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to cool. go with, um, yeah, I feel good about that. Rewind that. Is that the name? Rewind that is the name. Rewind yes. that. Thanks for asking. It's possible I would have asked him to do that. Yes. Yes. Rewind that. Congratulations. You have won a annual membership to Drumeo. So contact me, krad at drumeo.com, and we'll get you set up right away. Well, we've reached the end, everybody. Can you, yeah, that hour flew by. It's fast. It's over an hour. I think. It's over. Uh, it's yeah. It's just a little bit. Thank you all for hanging out with us. We started a little bit late today, but you know what? Sometimes those things that are you know, where they say good good things take time. Yeah, we were just doing sound check and getting everything set up. Look at the, the spaceship of a kiss. Speaking of that, we should really we thank our here. crew <laughs> who yeah, have been working huge. really hard today. So thanks to Josh. Thanks to Chris. Thanks to Jack, of course. Thanks to who else we got in here? Ross. Jay Ross. I think Jesus is over there on Tyson. the other cam. Tyson. Well, Tyson, for sure. He's not even here. He yeah, made that happen. Yeah. It's amazing. Jonathan, thank you thank for you, Jonathan. joining us on the drum department. Thank you for having me back. Yes, yeah. Sir. Everybody's been wonderful. And thanks to all the crew for pulling everything together. Can, can you play us out with the lo locomotive group one more time? Please. <laughs> please. Everybody, stay tuned next week. We'll be back. We're going to do something special.